In mathematics, more specifically complex analysis, the residue is a complex number proportional to the contour integral of a meromorphic function along a path enclosing one of its singularities. Residues can be computed quite easily and, once known, allow the determination of general contour integrals via the residue theorem. Definition The residue of a meromorphic function at an isolated singularity, often denoted all, is the unique value such that has an analytic antiderivative in a punctured disk. Alternatively, residues can be calculated by finding Laurent series expansions and one can define a residue as the coefficient a1 of a Laurent series. The definition of a residue can be generalized to arbitrary Riemann surfaces. Suppose as a one form on a Riemann surface, let be meromorphic at some point, so that we may write in local coordinates is, then the residue of it is defined to be the residue of at the point corresponding to. Example. As an example, consider the contour integral where C is some simple closed curve about zero. Let us evaluate this integral using a standard convergence result about integration by series. We can substitute the Taylor series for into the integrand. The integral then becomes let us bring the 1, z5 factor into the series. The contour integral of the series then writes since the series converges uniformly on the support of the integration path. We are allowed to exchange integration and summation. The series of the path integrals then collapses to a much simpler form. Recall that so now the integral around C of every other term not in the form C said minus 1 is 0, and the integral is reduced to the value 1 quarter, is the residue of EZ, Z5 at Z equals 0, and is denoted calculating residues. Suppose a punctured disk D equals Z, 0 less than, Z minus C, less than R, in the complex plane is given and F is a holomorphic function defined on D. The residue res of F at C is the coefficient of minus 1 of minus 1 in the Laurent series expansion of F around C. Various methods exist for calculating this value, and the choice of which method to use depends on the function in question, and on the nature of the singularity. According to Corky's integral formula, we have, where gamma traces out a circle around C in a counterclockwise manner, we may choose the path gamma to be a circle of radius epsilon around C, where epsilon is as small as we desire. This may be used for calculation in cases where the integral can be calculated directly, but it is usually the case that residues are used to simplify calculation of integrals, and not the other way around. Removable singularities if the function f can be continued to a holomorphic function on the whole disk, y, c, less than r, then res equals zero. The converse is not generally true. Simple poles at a simple pole c, the residue of f is given by. It may be that the function f can be expressed as a quotient of two functions, f equals g, h where g and h are holomorphic functions in a neighborhood of c, with h equals 0 and h, 0. In such a case, the above formula simplifies to limit formula for higher order poles more generally, if c is a pole of order n, then the residue of f around z equals c can be found by the formula. This formula can be very useful in determining the residues for low order poles. For higher order poles, the calculations can become unmanageable, and series expansion is usually easier. Also for essential singularities, residues often must be taken directly from series expansions. Residue at infinity in general, the residue at infinity is given by, if the following condition is met, then the residue at infinity can be computed using the following formula. If instead, then the residue at infinity is, Series methods if parts or all of a function can be expanded into a Taylor series or Laurent series, which may be possible if the parts or the whole of the function has a standard series expansion, then calculating the residue is significantly simpler than by other methods. 1. As a first example, consider calculating the residues at the singularities of the function which may be used to calculate certain contour integrals. 
This function appears to have a singularity at z equals zero. But if one factorizes the denominator and thus writes the function as it is apparent that the singularity at z equals zero is a removable singularity in, then the residue at z equals zero is therefore zero. The only other singularity is at z equals one. Recall the expression for the Taylor series for a function g about z equals a. So, for g equals sin z and a equals 1 we have and for g equals 1, z and a equals 1 we have multiplying those two series and introducing 1, gives us so the residue of f at z equals 1 is sin 1. 2. The next example shows that, computing a residue by series expansion, a major role is played by the Lagrange inversion theorem. Let be an entire function, and let with positive radius of convergence, and with, so has a local inverse at zero, and is meromorphic at zero. Then we have, indeed, because the first series converges uniformly on any small circle around zero, using the Lagrange inversion theorem, and we get the above expression. For example, if and also, then in, the first term contributes 1 to the residue, and the second term contributes 2 since it is asymptotic to. Note that, with the corresponding stronger symmetric assumptions on and, it also follows, where is a local inverse of at 0, 